Hello, welcome back. We are going to spend a great deal of this course computing with and talking about matrices. And I just used a word you might not know, so let me write it down. Matrices, that's the plural of matrix. So one matrix, many matrices. So we're gonna spend a lot of this course computing with matrices. And we're going to learn how to think about matrices and why they act the way they do. But what I want to do in this lecture is much more of a nuts and bolts basics lecture. I want to tell you what the parts of a matrix are. I want to tell you what the different things we do with matrices are and how they work together. So this is very much a straightforward, here are the various things you need to know about matrices to get started in the course. So a matrix is a rectangular grid of numbers. And let me give you the vocabulary words that we use to refer to the parts of the matrix. A row is a horizontal band. So here is row number two. And a column is a vertical strip. Here is column number three. If we talk, want to talk about the size of a matrix, we would say, for example, if this is a three by five matrix, that's three because there are three rows and five because there are five columns. And if we want to refer to an individual entry in this matrix, so for example, maybe this entry here, A23, that's called 23 because it is in row number two and it is in column number three. Okay, so that's just how we refer to the different parts of our matrix. So what can we do with matrices? The simplest thing we can do is we can add them. We only add matrices when they are the same size, and then we just add the parts one by one. So this entry here in this matrix, the entry in position one, two, is A12 plus B12, the entries in the same position. The more interesting thing we do is that we multiply them. So we can only multiply matrices if the number of columns of the first matrix equals the number of rows of the second matrix. So here's the corny little picture I have in my head. I like to think of a matrix as having, as a little machine, which has output pipes coming off the left-hand side, one output pipe for each row, and has input pipes coming in from the right through the top like this. So one input pipe for each column. And why am I bringing this up now? Because I only multiply two matrices if the number of outputs coming from here matches the number of inputs that are waiting over here. So let me draw that in a picture for you. So this matrix has three rows, three outputs, and has four inputs. And we are permitted to multiply this three by four matrix by this four by two matrix because the number of input pipes here matches the number of output pipes here. And what will we get when we do that multiplication? We'll get a matrix which has three output pipes and two input pipes. So 
which we'll see on the next slide. So the product matrix has two inputs, just like this one does. and has three outputs, just like this one does. And the blue pipes are jammed together in the middle of the machine where we've plugged the outputs of this matrix into the inputs of this matrix. Uh, I'll draw that for you. Okay, so that's when we, when we are allowed to multiply matrices. We multiply matrices when the number of columns of the first matrix equals the number of rows of the second matrix. Now, what is the product? So in order to compute, for example, this matrix entry here, well, that entry is in row two and column one. So what we're going to do is we are going to compute it using row two from the left-hand factor and column one from the right-hand factor. And how do we do the computation? We go across the row and down the column, and we multiply the entries we see by each other and add them up. So we take A21 times B11, and we add that to A22 times B21, plus A23 times B31, plus A24 times B41. And if you like summation notation, here I've written that with a sigma. So it's not supposed to be obvious to you why we do this. I will give you some reasons in the next lecture and we will keep seeing if this is a good idea throughout the course. What I'd like you to do now is just learn this rule and let me talk to you about some of the properties this rule has. So one thing that's very important is it matters what order we multiply in. A times B is not the same thing as B times A with matrices. And first of all, B times A might not even be defined. So here on the left-hand side, this is good. On the left-hand side, I've got three columns over here and three rows here, and I can connect them up. But if I try to do it the other way, then I've got two rows over here and one column here, and I can't even plug these rows into this column. I've got two pipes here and one pipe here. They don't connect. So it might be the product doesn't even make sense in both orders. And then as the rest of this slide says, even when the products make sense, they don't have to have the same size. So if I take a two by one matrix and a one by two matrix and multiply them in this order, I get a two by two matrix. But if I multiply them in the other order, I get a one by one matrix. And even if they do have the same size, they don't have to be equal. So here I have a two by two matrix, A, B, C, D, and another two by two matrix, W, X, Y, Z. And if you look, for example, at the upper left entries, you'll see that A, W plus B, Y is not the same thing as A, W plus C, X. So it absolutely matters what order we multiply in. On the other hand, that is the only main way that matrix multiplication differs from regular multiplication. So a lot of students, what they will remember is it matters how you multiply. It really is important what order you multiply in, but everything else works about the way you're used to. And if that's a way you're comfortable thinking, I'm okay with you thinking that way. But some other students will really want a list of exactly what things do and do not work the way you're used to. So the next slide is going to give you that list. 
And if you like the idea of thinking about exactly which of the properties you're used to for ordinary numbers still work or do not work for matrices, then the mathematical subject you want to study is abstract algebra and you should take math 312 or 412. Great courses. Okay, so here are all things that still work just fine for matrices. So when I write zero here, I mean the matrix, which is all zeros. It's a big rectangle where every entry is zero. A plus zero and zero plus A are still A. So that's just like you're used to zero working. And there's also a matrix that works just like a number one, but funnily, we don't call it one. We call it identity and write ID. And that's the matrix that has ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. And that matrix acts just like a number one, identity times X is X and X times identity is X. Also, just like with numbers, A times zero is zero and zero times A is zero. Um, I told you multiplication, A times B is not usually B times A, but addition is still just fine. A plus B is B plus A. Also, A plus B plus C is the same thing as A plus B plus C just like you're used to. And AB times C is A times BC, just like you're used to. And finally, the distributive law still works as long as you're careful about which side you distribute on. So A times B plus C is AB plus AC. And X plus Y times Z is XZ plus YZ. Those are all the important things to say, but I'm also gonna use this lecture to squeeze in one unimportant thing or for now it's unimportant, it will be important later, which is the transpose of a matrix. So one last piece of notation. So the transpose is what you get if you switch the rows and the columns. So think of it as switching the number of output pipes and the number of input pipes and do it in the most obvious silly way. So here I have a matrix which has two rows and three columns. And I turn it into a matrix which has three rows and two columns just by reflecting in which entry is where. So it used to be that the first row was ABC and now the first column is ABC. Used to be that the first row was DEF, now the second, sorry, the second row was DEF, now the second column is DEF. And one thing to know about transpose, and you can have fun checking this yourself, if you take a transpose of a product, you get back a product of the transposes in the other order. So AB transpose is B transpose, A transpose. Okay, um, we're really gonna start seriously using transpose in chapter five, but the book starts using it in chapter two, so, so will I. And there's one small silly thing which transpose is useful for immediately, and that's gonna be the last thing I tell you. So, we are going to write vectors as column matrices. So a three-dimensional vector would be X, Y, Z. This is good for a lot of things, but one thing that's bad about it is if you want a 10-dimensional vector, you need to take up a lot of space on your page. See, here's 10 entries stacked up. And it would be a lot easier to read if I wrote it horizontally. So a lot of the time you'll see me and your textbook write out a really long vector like this horizontally and then just toss a transpose on the end in order to turn it into a vertical vector. There's nothing deep happening there. It's just about saving space on the page. So it's easier to write. Okay, so the main things you should remember from this lecture are how you multiply matrices and probably some of the basic properties of how matrix multiplication works. And if you turn to the next lecture, then you will we will talk about why is it that we multiply matrices in this way.